Welcome to the Produce Moms Podcast, where we believe there is a produce mom in all of us. I'm Lori Taylor, founder and CEO of the Produce Moms. For 10 years, I sold fresh produce to over 300 grocery stores in the U.S. And today, my team and I are fully focused on inspiring people to eat more fruits and vegetables. This show is just one of the ways that we hope to inspire you and your family to eat more produce and live a better life. If you like what you're hearing on the podcast, join our community of almost 40,000 in all 50 50 states and over 30 countries by visiting theproducemoms.com slash subscribe. And be sure to subscribe and leave us a review on iTunes. Thanks for being here. Enjoy today's show. Welcome back, everyone. This is the Produce Moms podcast, and my name is Lori Taylor. I am the founder of the Produce Moms. I love hosting this show. I'm thankful that you're all here. And today's guest, you are going to love this story. I know, you know, I haven't really said this line a lot recently, but this entire podcast started because we wanted to have a platform where we could showcase people that were doing work that matters the most, showcase the folks that were really, you know, dedicated to what our mission is at the Produce Moms. And that is we want to get more fruits and vegetables on every table. And, and oh my goodness, are you going to love the gentleman that is joining us today on our podcast? We are welcoming Dan Zauder. He is the co-founder and executive director of Mott Haven Fridge Network. He is also a former sixth grade teacher in the Bronx. So we'll talk a little bit about how education has influenced his, you know, development and launch of the Mott Haven Fridge Network. And what is, what is the Mott Haven Fridge Network? You're probably wondering, well, we're going to get into that today in the show, but at a high level, this is a movement and an organization that is expanding the access to food with dignity. So of course, work that matters the most, right? And with that, Dan, welcome to the show. We're really glad you're here. Thank you so much, Lori. I'm really, really glad to be here. Oh, thank you, Dan. This is going to be a great show. I absolutely love what you guys are doing. Um, before we really dive into what the Mott Haven Fridge Network is, please tell us a little bit about yourself and your professional background. Sure. So I am a former startup guy. I graduated from college and had some internships and jobs in the startup world. And then like many in that world, I had an existential crisis and I thought, what am I doing with my life? And I heard that when people didn't know what they were doing with their lives, they went to go teach English abroad. So I decided to go to Costa Rica to teach English. And I taught English there for two years and discovered that I really love teaching. So I, can't, I went back to New York. I got my master's degree at Teachers College and I proceeded to teach at the American Dream School which is a bilingual charter school in the heart of the South Bronx, serving mostly the children of undocumented immigrants. I did that for four years. And that's when I just discovered a reality that I had never been acquainted with before. I mean, I had heard about it, but, but that's when I really discovered and, and witnessed firsthand the reality that, that there are people in our own country that don't have enough money to put food on the table. Mm -hmm. And so based on that, you know, I got together with some colleagues and, and um, what started is just witnessing a, a problem turned into a really innovative approach and finding a solution. And so that's a short little background on, on my no, I love it. So <laughs> your your experience in the classroom and being immersed in this culture of the South Bronx was just absolutely the foundation of starting the Mott Haven Fridge Network. So let's talk a little bit about that. What is Mott Haven Fridge? Yeah. So, well, so what's amazing, what was amazing to me is that, you know, I would wake we were all remote during the pandemic. And so mm -hmm. I would wake up roll out of bed and teach a Zoom class. And there were sometimes, you know, 30 faces on the other end of the Zoom camp. And what devastated me was the fact that 45% of those kids, because I did a survey to our sixth grade families, 45% of those families said that they had to skip meals or cut down on meals because they didn't have enough money to pay for food. Mm. And so that means that almost one out of every two kids that I was staring at in the Zoom screen were kids whose families didn't have enough money 
to put food on the table. So right. that's really what started the Mod Haven Fridge Network. And, and what the Mod Haven Fridge Network started as was not a network. It just started as, as the Mod Haven Fridge. And, and it's because I, I heard about this idea that people were putting out refrigerators, literally household refrigerators on sidewalks and filling them with free, fresh produce for anyone in need to take 24 seven. And I thought, wow, this is something that Mod Haven absolutely needs. It's something that would really benefit my students and their families. And that's what started the seed of the idea. And thanks to fellow teachers, thanks to other community organizations in Mod Haven, and thanks, of course, to the community members themselves in Mod Haven, we were able to put down the first free food fridge in Mod Haven. Then we were able to put down a second one. And finally, we were able to expand this into an entire network whose goal is to democratize access to food, meaning mm -hmm. that, yeah, just meaning that, that there shouldn't be a gatekeeper to food. You shouldn't have to sacrifice any dignity to get the food that you need. And also everybody should be able to be involved in that process of being a part of their own self-empowerment. Nobody should feel like they're getting a handout. And so that is really a big part of the Mod Haven Fridge Network too. It's also all about anonymity. The idea that just because you know you, you, you need food doesn't mean that you should have to give up your, your identity in order to get it. And, mm. and so that's another big piece of this because a lot of my students' families were undocumented immigrants and they did not feel comfortable uh, waiting on pantry lines. And also the other thing that you should know is that during the pandemic, as the number of COVID cases went up, the number of food pantries went down. And to make matters even worse, 90% of food pantry closures that happen, happen in the highest need areas. Right, right. Yeah. So looking at your Instagram page, which is just, it brings the story to life. It's wonderful. So the the handle for everyone that's listening is Mott Haven Fridge. Um, and it's, it's just showing the evolution really of your movement here and, and the growth of this network. Um, one thing that I love when I look at what you all have accomplished is you're not only providing this, this food access and, and to your point, democratizing the process, you know, making it something that's so accessible to everyone, but it's really done in a beautiful way. I mean, you've turned your, your, the, the fridges themselves into beautiful works of art. It's, you know, communities coming together and painting murals on these fridges and, you know, just adding to the beauty of the Mott Haven community. So if you, if you want to talk a little bit more about that and like simply just the infrastructure of, of what the Mott Haven fridge network is all about. Sure. So every time that we put a fridge down on a sidewalk, it's not only an opportunity to invite the community to be part of their own journey to access food in a more equitable way, but it's also an opportunity to bring beauty back to some areas of the city that have just been completely overlooked. Mm -hmm. um, and so these, these sidewalks where our fridges are located are, are really now beautiful community hubs, especially our first Mott Haven fridge location. And a great example of that is that this, a couple Sundays ago, we did an event that we that was just so exciting. It was called Brunch on a Bronx Sidewalk. <laughs> and the idea was that we were going to get together all of the stakeholders that have been part of our journey. So volunteers, donors, community members, community partners. And we all got together and we sat down on two long tablecloth tables and we broke bread together as people that have been part of this food access journey. It didn't matter where we were from, what our socioeconomic status was, what our race or religion was. We all sat down at the same communal table and we broke bread together. And, and uh, you know, restaurants from the area participated, some national, even Luke's Lobster, I'm sure you heard of them. They participated. They brought crab rolls. Um, a famous catering company that works with corporate cafeterias called Great Performances brought some summer salads. Um, and so many people came out to show support of this concept of just because what, what happens is, is when you, when you put a, a fridge filled with free food on the street that says free food on it, suddenly 
it's inviting everybody yeah. to be part of access to food. It's no longer behind closed doors. You right. can't pretend like it doesn't like like this problem doesn't exist. And and what's even better about that is that everybody is invited to participate, right? So now it's just as simple as how do you get involved? Well, you walk by the Mod Haven fridge and you see our guidelines and, and you realize that you can be part of the solution. Even if you can't afford to put food in the fridge, you can help distribute food from it. You can volunteer to clean it and you can be a part of that process of ensuring that everybody, regardless of who they are, has access to the healthy produce that they need to sustain themselves and their families. I love that. And to your point, nothing brings people together like food. And, you know, that is that is definitely a common thread of this podcast, too, is just the cultural side of food and the like the unifying force that food has amongst all people. So uh, just beautiful work that you guys are doing. Great, incredible impact that you're making on your community there in the South Bronx. Let's talk about the evolution of the Mott Haven Fridge Network. So it all started with one refrigerator, right? That's exactly right. It, it, it literally started with, well, I also just want to clarify that this is important to note that we, we didn't, I didn't come up with the idea of community fridges. So the, the first community fridge in New York was founded in February in Brooklyn by a group called In Our Hearts New York. And it was actually founded accidentally because this guy Thaddeus um, was looking to store some extra produce for an event that they had the following day. And um, he didn't have any room in his house anymore. So he plugged in a fridge out, outside of his brownstone in Brooklyn. and then it just started being used as a community fridge. And so then the idea came about, and obviously the pandemic hit and this idea just exploded. And so we sort of entered the space when there were already community fridges around in the Bronx and in Manhattan. Yeah. And, and other boroughs. Wanted, and yeah. 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 And other boroughs. And, and, and what we wanted to do was just, I mean, originally I just wanted to offer this concept to my own students and their families because mm -hmm. I couldn't deal. I just couldn't deal with this reality that. So when, when I said that, right, 45 percent of them, 45 percent of my students, families said that they couldn't, you know, get food on the table. Well, 25 percent of them, 25 percent of our 88 sixth grade families said that they were cutting down or skipping meals um, a few times a week because they didn't have enough money to pay for food. That's what this survey revealed. And yeah. so really. This project initially was just something to help my students and, and their families. Um, and so it was just a free fridge filled with fresh food. We opened up to a really big uh, ceremony, a really big ribbon cutting ceremony where lots of press people came. And suddenly, you know, the ex it, it was just so much bigger than we had anticipated. The excitement that it generated was huge. And lots of local pantries and local nonprofits and local restaurants wanted to participate. And, and the fridge just got filled way more often than we anticipated. And, and the volunteer network started growing. And then we had the opportunity to open up a second fridge in Mott Haven. Um, both of these fridges are, are both plugged into local bodegas. Um, and so we, we had an opportunity to open up a second one. And then I think that this is also important to note that we discovered a real problem mm -hmm. and it's a problem that we realized we weren't alone in and that all of these sort of grassroots food justice movements suffered from, which is that even though we were the solutions that had the best connection to people in need, we were really boots on the ground, you know, connecting directly with the grassroots. We also had the hardest time getting access to food because we didn't have those relationships with these big food rescue organizations. And our scale was almost too small to be able to make a relationship with, with a big supplier work. And right. so, yeah, so, so, so we thought, well, what needs to happen then is we need to create a distribution network and we need to create a distribution network that ensures that food really makes it the last mile, really makes it to the people in need. And so what we started to do is we developed a mobile forward 
app, I guess you can call it. I mean, it's, it's, all, it's all based on text messages and links. We don't have a real app, um, but it, it's a system where anybody who has a heart and a car, I call it big cars, big hearts, can sign <laughs> yeah. up as a yeah. driver in our system. And they get connected with opportunities to pick up excess produce that would otherwise go to waste. And then those drivers get sent to different grassroots hubs around the city serving people in need. Um, so it's all based on volunteers that are willing to help move excess produce to where there's need. Um, and that's sort of what this has evolved into it is a network of neighbors with heart who want to make an impact on their own time to solve this age old problem of, of food insecurity. Right. Right. And so today, how many, how many refrigerators are part of the Mott Haven fridge network? That's a great question. So we run the two directly in Mott Haven and we mm -hmm. also have three more coming in the way, coming on the way in, in, uh, in September, uh, uh, the locations are, 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 You'll have to go to our website for the, for the locations to be revealed, but they're all Bronx-based locations. Um, and in addition to that, we distribute food with our driver network to over 20 different community hubs. Um, wow. They're grassroots that are ranging from senior centers to housing projects to schools themselves. I mean, we, we've dropped off uh, when, when they were doing the farmer to families boxes, we dropped those off directly outside of the American dream school and American dream school families were able to help volunteer to distribute the food and also took the food for their families. And that was also a really important thing to me. Cause I mean, what we discovered is that again, you know, places like the American dream school that really have their, their really have a pulse on, on what's going on in the local community and really have a connection to people in need they also don't have relationships with City Harvests, with Food Bank, New York City, with Feeding America. They don't have relationships with these big produce suppliers. And yet their families and their students were some of the ones that, that were most more in need than, than others. And so we feel really good about being able to bridge that gap and make sure that food gets the last mile to people that are really in need. I mean, because as I'm sure that, you know, you know, being in the space is, is it's not that fresh produce doesn't exist, right? Pounds sure. and pounds, pounds of it go to waste. I mean, I'm sure you're familiar with this issue. Yeah. It's, it's a crippling statistic. I mean, there's depending on who you ask up to 40% of the food that is grown actually ends up in the garbage. Um, it's, it's really sad. Right. So, so, and it's it, the point, right? So the point is, is it, it's not, not that fresh produce doesn't exist. What what what's missing? We call it the missing middle, right? There's all this bulk food on the one side, and then on the other side, there are all these grassroots food justice initiatives. And then in the middle is this huge gap. So what we're doing is we're building the software and recruiting the volunteers to power that missing middle to be the missing link between bulk food and grassroots food justice initiatives that are serving people in need. And we're doing that through a driver network that's powered by neighbors helping neighbors. You got to love it. Yeah. I mean, one of the sentiments on the fridge itself and a sentiment that is, that is shared throughout your Instagram page is take what you need, leave what you can. Yep. Yeah. I mean, those are great. Those are great life lessons beyond just, you know, being a pillar of what your, of what your, uh, you know, the Mott Haven Fridge Network is all about. So this is, uh, I mean, super inspiring. Listen, listening to you, Dan, and talking about how this was founded and, and how it has grown and, uh, you know, where is it going from here? I mean, I assume that expansion is just, you see, I, I, I have to think that expansion is just going to continue to come for you. Um, but, but how do people like those listening to today's episode, how do people get involved? Sure. So depending on where you are, if you are in New York, please join our driver network. All you have to do is go to motthavenfridge.com and sign up to be a driver. And if you have a big car and a big heart, and you have a couple hours, then 
Sign up to be a driver and we'll start connecting you with opportunities to bring fresh produce that would otherwise go to waste to neighbors in need. So that's one way to get involved. Really easy if you're in New York. The other way to get involved for anybody is to donate. We are now on the way to becoming a 501c3 organization. Um, so we have our application submitted to the IRS. We're about to be a 501c3 and people can donate by going to modhavenfridge.com as well. Donations pay for logistics. They pay for building the pantries and the shelters that go around every single fridge that we put up. They pay for this volunteer matching technology that we're creating. They pay for just our day-to-day -day operations. And without those donations, we, we really wouldn't be able to do what we do. I mean, you know, neighbors helping neighbors is, is a great idea, but it's only as strong as the people in the network. And so if you're out there listening to this and you think, listen, I'm a neighbor, I have a big heart and I want to help. And you have any extra means then I'd really encourage you to go and, and make a donation because I feel strongly that we're offering a new paradigm here. We're just changing the narrative. There's a total movement happening too, whether it's in the boroughs or New York or undoubtedly other parts of the country where, where this, this concept is coming alive in communities. It's just amazing because again, all it takes is walking by a free food fridge or being exposed to this idea and realizing that you can make a difference too. And so if you, if you, uh, you know, even if, regardless of whether you can donate to our cause, if you're not in New York, if you're in a part of New York that doesn't have a community fridge, talk to us and, and, and we'll help you start one. We'll, we'll give you the resources that you need to start your own community fridge, wherever you might be. And I'm really more than happy to, to be, to help you be a part of that process, to, to make sure that, that we could just keep expanding access to food around the United States. Um, and, because it, it's just amazing that, that there's this impulse. I mean, people thought, oh, you, you put a, a fridge filled with free food in the Bronx and it'll be stolen. And you know what? It hasn't been stolen. It, it hasn't even been vandalized. It, it's just grown. And, and it's just brought more and more attention and more and more communal spirit to those areas. And, you know, so, yeah, if, if you're listening to this, give a financial contribution. If, if you, if you are in New York, sign up to be a driver. And if you're in another part of the, of the world or the U S talk to us about, about how to start your own community for it, because that's, again, we're democratizing access to food. So that means anybody can be involved and we want to encourage you to be a good neighbor, right? I think that's the other thing is that if, if we live in a global village and lots of people say that we do, right? If, if we really truly live in a global village, then that means that we're all fellow neighbors, right? And that means that, that it's up to all of us to lend a helping hand and make sure that our fellow neighbor has what they need. So, so what we're really trying to do is just systematize or operationalize this human impulse to be a good neighbor. So that's my call to action for you today is, is just be a good neighbor and, and think about how you can help solve this age old problem of, of, of food access and know that you can do it in a way that's equitable, that's democratic, and that restores dignity to all stakeholders involved. Such an incredible episode. And as a reminder, everyone, you can visit motthavenfridge.com to learn more about, uh, you know, this, it, it's a true movement. I mean, it's a network, but it really is a movement and for sure, check them out on, on Instagram, TikTok, and all social platforms. So Dan, with that, uh, you know, you get the final goodbye for today's episode. Yeah. I mean, I've truly enjoyed having you on today. I applaud the work that you're doing. Uh, it's very important and, Gosh, coming back to my opening remarks, you know, expanding access to food with dignity. It's it's incredible. So thank you for what you do. And thanks for being our guest today. Thank you so much. Um, I mean, I, I couldn't be happier than to be on this podcast. I love spreading the word about this movement because we're just so passionate. We're so passionate about the idea that everybody should be able to play a part in 
access to food. I mean, we, we've worked with sororities and fraternities. We've worked with national construction companies that have come to build our fridges and shelters. We work with a gym every single month. All the gym members come to help unload a truck and, and sort and pack produce. We, we work with just so many folks that go far beyond the traditional notion of volunteer and want to know why the reason is, is because they're all, we are all neighbors and, and we're all at heart invested in making sure that our fellow neighbors have what they need. And as a closing, I, I just wanted to thank you so much for having me on this podcast and giving me the opportunity to spread our message of, of democratizing access to food and restoring access to food with dignity. And I wanted to encourage the listeners to just go check out our website, www.motthavenfridge, M-O-T-T-H-A-V-E-N-F-R-I-D-G-E.com. And there you can join our volunteer network. You can learn more about how to start your own fridge. You can give a financial contribution and you can learn more about what being a good neighbor in this food access space is all about. Thanks for joining us on this episode of the Produce Moms podcast. If you or someone you know would like to be a featured guest, just send an email to Lori at theproducemoms.com. We know there is a produce mom in you because there's a produce mom in all of us. Join our community on Facebook and all social platforms. Help us change the way America eats. Thanks again for listening, and we'll see you next time.